we now have a quorum and I call the meeting to order. We are going to hold a Zoom meeting and the meeting will be for two hours until 1 p.m. and if needed, I will extend the meeting by 15 minutes. Please make sure that you would show your face. I welcome the Financial Secretary, Mr. Chen, and the Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury, Mr. Christopher Hoy, and other officials for attending the meeting. I now hand over the floor to the Financial Secretary. The Financial Secretary is on his way. Well, let's, let me first go through the proceedings with you today. After the financial secretary speaks, I will first ask our staff to clear the raise hand indicator, and then I will invite you all to uh, raise your hand. As I do not have any technicians here to help me, we are all uh, working from Zoom, uh, we are going to time manually because we would not have an electric timer and you would all be able to speak for four minutes including the answer part. So please remember to speak for only half the time and to allow the financial secretary enough time to answer your questions. Financial secretary, please. Good morning. Today, my colleagues and I are here attending today's meeting to brief you on the 2020-23 budget, to hear members' views and to address your concerns. The global economy has been recovering and from the from last year, the epidemic has remained stable. We can see that the private market is rebounding. And in 2021, Hong Kong's economy started to rejuvenate. And actually, we were able to reverse our past uh, cycles. But then in recent days, we have seen a resurge in cases, and that has brought along huge challenges to Hong Kong's economy. In order to relieve the economic impact, I have suggested about a 70 billion counter cyclical measures to rejuvenate the economy and to boost confidence after the epidemic. There are four main points this year. First, of course, is to fight the pandemic. The epidemic has been affecting the economy and people's lives when we are going to move all measures to try to overcome the epidemic. Other than the 27 billion in AEF, in the new financial year, we're also going to increase 60 billion to uh, work on riding out the epidemic to purchase uh, rapid antigen tests and vaccines to enhance our environmental hygiene. Secondly, uh, to try to relieve people's hard times in order to relieve people's hardship. Uh, we are going to um, relieve income tax and also to provide those uh, who are receiving uh, grants to have an extra one and a half month of subsidies. We're also going to uh, extend the public subsidy scheme. I'm also going to extend the 100% loan guarantee scheme to April of next year, and then to also to extend the loan period. I also suggest to um, provide a property rate um, rental relief so that uh, this will be able to relieve those who are renting property for domestic purposes. We are going to try to relieve people's hardship in enterprises and also to help uh, and support enterprises. 
So we are going to provide rates concession and reduce salaries tax and also to uh, waive different utilities. We also going to help um, those under the SMB financing guarantee scheme to extend to June of next year and the special 100% loan guarantee will also see an extension. We are also going to also to extend by half year the pre-approved principal payment holiday scheme and for SMEs uh, to enjoy some sort of um, financial pressure we are also going to um, extend um, a rent period for three months and then it can also automatically extend for three more months. Third, to uh, to um, support enterprises and we are going to try to open up our borders with the mainland as soon as possible, considering the uh, issuance of consumption vouchers last year, we are also going to issue this year to each eligible Hong Kong resident about $10,000 in consumption vouchers. And that will be able to uh, benefit about uh, 6.8 million people. In June, for about uh, 6.3 million who have enjoyed this benefit, they will receive their consumption vouchers in June. And starting from this year, we'll, we'll also see uh, 3 million more, uh, 30,000 um, more eligible people to enjoy this benefit, which can try to boost the economy and to also promote the use of electronic vouchers. Chairman, we going to continue with the one country, two systems principle, and also move, we want to ensure that we'll be able to um, share a promising future together with the motherland. We must work in boosting innovation and technology development and to continue to enhance our financial aviation and other services to ensure that uh, Hong Kong has its unique and replaceable role to play under the 14th five-year plan. We'll also be working in arts and cultural development, um, open up more land. And the budget also mentioned investing into Hong Kong's future, including using future fund and to increase it by about $10 billion, out of which $5 billion will be used to set up the Innovation and Development Fund and to nurture mature and uh, huge potential enterprises to contribute to Hong Kong's economy. And we'll also be investing into the Greater Bay Area Fund to promote development in the area and to bring economic impact. We're also going to work in research and development and $10 million will be earmarked to help tertiary institutes and enterprises in a startup and also to set up a better supply chain so that we'll be able to have more uh, technological development so that Hong Kong will become an innovation and technology hub. In addition, the northern metropolis will be able to provide land supply for both residential and IT use. I'm going to earmark uh, money to uh, speed up the process of building the northern metropolis. And then lastly, on public finance. This is the last budget in this term's government. We have around, um, uh, we have a very ample resources, about 950 billion in reserves, and we have earmarked our finances to override the epidemic. Although we expected to see 
a deficit, we estimate Originally, we estimated that in 2021 to 2020, we'll be able to see a consolidated deficit. However, we now see a consolidated surplus. We, we can see that uh, with the government green bond program, and based on the revised estimates, uh, we were going to see about uh, 64 billion in deficit. However, we were able to, uh, because we have uh, been spending finances on the epidemic, I estimate that we'll be able to see a deficit in 2022-2023, but then starting from 2024, we'll be able to uh, maintain a balance. And then for the years after that, uh, we have not taken into consideration any uh, one-off expenses to ensure that we'll be able to maintain a balance, we must ensure economic development and to open up new ways to increase our revenue. With the um, introduction of a global minimum tax rate, it will also be able to help increase revenue from profits tax. We also uh, suggest introducing a progressive rating system for domestic properties to reflect the affordable users pay principle. We will continue to look into more new revenue streams to satisfy the needs of the economy. Uh, we are faced with um, uh, new challenges. We're going to continue to explore different ways to broaden our revenue resources and to sustain healthy public finances. We're also going to uh, focus on the country's uh, policy and to uh, try to cater to the needs of Hong Kong. We have provided a power point which has been circulated to members. I suggest that uh, we not go through it because of time constraints. I, together with uh, Krista Bohoy and Catherine Chu and my other colleagues are happy to answer members' questions. Thank you. We now move on to a Q and A. In order to be fair, uh, we're first going to clear the raise hand indicator on the screens. All right. Please do not. Uh, click on the raise hand button yet. All right, for those who would like to speak, please indicate on uh, the raise hand feature now in order to allow more time for members to ask questions. So uh, each member will have uh, four minutes. Well, as we are going to manually count the time today, when you reach four minutes, your microphone will be off. But for government officials, you can speak over four minutes. However, I hope that you will be concise and keep your uh, speaking within the four minute limit. Let me first read out the order of the first few speakers. First, Mr. Michael Chen, um, uh, Dr. Chick, uh, Mr. Uh, Lam. Yeah, Andrew Lam, Ms. Jofi Chen, Mr. Lo Wei Bok. And then the uh, Secretariat will then uh, list out the order of speaking and would send to members. First, Mr. Michael Chen. Well, Chairman, can you hear me? Yes. Chairman, I like uh, I have um, uh, three votes of ten thanks and two requests. Well, from 2018, I have already started to speak for people or taxpayers uh, who have been um, paying um, tax. But uh, this year, you uh, already granted that. And also, I have fighting for the double working um, families to ask for more subsidies. You expressed in the past that uh, you could not make a decision. And I'm glad to see that this year uh, you have made a decision to uh, release the subsidies to these families. And also, I also thank you for um, releasing um, the measure of a subsidy of $10,000 for each eligible person in Hong Kong. Well, you mentioned that $5,000 will be um, dispatched um, 
in April. I hope that it can be used as cash so that uh, people can use these uh, subsidies uh, as a kind of relief. For the remaining $5,000, uh, does it mean that you have to wait until the epidemic is uh, controlled? And then will you consider relieving them um, every, on a monthly basis? And also, a lot of people insist that uh, cash should be um, um, discharged. But then, but then I've been asking for the um, government to install a kind of e-payment um, mechanisms in the markets. I think the government should uh, really uh, try to enforce this. Otherwise, the uh, consumption voucher will not be useful to the people who are going to buy things in the market. And also, the fifth um, outbreak of epidemic has uh, made our economy very bad. All the economies have been hardly hit. And you mentioned that there will be a rental moratorium, but that is no use because people will not have the money three or six months later to pay up the, uh, the rent. So I think the most important thing is to introduce a kind of um, incentive for the reduction of rent. So I'd like to ask why the government is still not doing that. Secretary. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Tian, for your question. For the consumption vouchers, it will be um, dispersed in two tranches. And because of the epidemic, we understand that the uh, citizens are facing great pressure. So we hope that it can be dispersed ASAP. We don't know how the epidemic situation is going to be. So if there are still social distancing measures, so the, the uh, citizens are not encouraged to uh, go out. And that's why we have uh, given a pretty long period of time for people to spend the $10,000. Well, later on, we will uh, talk more about the um, consumption voucher in the press briefing. As for the disbursement of the second tranche, well, basically our initial thinking is that it will be disposed uh, by phases after the summer. Well, we are open to um, people's advice. In the meantime, we will continue to look into different kinds of um, mechanism to uh, disperse the money so that people have, can have more choice. Uh, regarding the point you raised, uh, that, of course, uh, it is very unfortunate and to see that the economy of Hong Kong has been hardly hit by the pandemic. You mentioned about tax incentive, and I, um, I think that it is not feasible. What is the reason? Why is it not feasible? I'm sorry, your time is up. Next, please, Mr. Lei Chi King. Mr. Dominic Lee, please turn on your microphone, Mr. Dominic Lee. Thank you, Chairman. Secretary, good morning. Regarding this budget, our party feels that this is facing the correct direction. We like to reiterate our stance. The consumption voucher is, of course, a good thing, but then uh, uh, dispersing cash, cash will be even better. Well, there is uh, the uh, social distancing measure until at least 20th of April. So if the, even if the citizen can receive the uh, money, if the epidemic is still um, uh, raging, how can they span it in outside? So because of the social distancing measure. So we think that uh, discharging, dispersing cash will be better. But we, are, we don't know why, for those who have already immigrated, uh, are still eligible to receive the money. As we all know, recently there are a lot of Hong Kong people who have emigrated overseas. I understand that you require citizens to have been in Hong Kong for the past 24 months. But then for this group of people who have emigrated, they actually had spent time in Hong Kong in the past 24 months. In other words, they will be eligible to receive the money. 
there are, however, quite a lot of people who are living on the mainland. And because of the epidemic, they have not been able to return to Hong Kong. So in other words, these people who have been stranded in the, on the mainland um, in the past 24 months will not be able or are not eligible to receive the money. So I don't understand why you uh, allow the people who have left Hong Kong to receive the money or who have emigrated overseas to receive the money, but not those who uh, Hong Kong, not those Hong Kong people who are stranded on the mainland. Of course, I uh, we agree that uh, the relief measures should be implemented. And we agree that there shouldn't be any kind of screening. However, our point is that there should be a kind of declaration mechanism. For instance, it, uh, if the emigrated Hong Kong people who registered and uh, do not declare that they have already left Hong Kong or they have uh, emigrated from Hong Kong, um, if we find out later, then they uh, will not be able to receive the money. So my point is that we hope uh, the money should be given to the people who love Hong Kong, but not those who have left Hong Kong or who have abandoned Hong Kong. Well, thank you. The reason why we have decided to use uh, the consumption, uh, the, uh, the voucher instead of cash, because we want to uh, disperse the money ASAP. If we're going to disperse cash, then we will need to spend some time um, to register the people, and then the money cannot be dispersed um, sooner. And also, because the consumption voucher, there are different ways for the vouchers to be uh, redeemed. So. And then they will be given six to seven months to spend the $5,000. We believe that uh, um, this will be very convenient for the people to spend the money. As for the immigrants, as uh, the point that Mr. Lee pointed out uh, can be reconsidered during the uh, disbursement of the second tranche of the money. The, I'd like to ask uh, uh, Ms. Wong to explain this in further detail. Yes, we have discussed this with the Immigration Department. I'd like to see whether we could um, um, exclude the immigrants. However, on the record, well, there is no record of whether these people will return to Hong Kong after they have left. So it is impossible for us to do that. And uh, we have uh, set some requirements. For instance, we would ask the applicants to make a self-declaration. They have to declare whether they are eligible indeed, and we will uh, conduct checking. And fr from the previous um, exercise, we find that uh, this mechanism is feasible because um, there are about uh, 7.2 million people who were eligible um, in the last round. But then for this round, um, there are only about 6.3 million people who are eligible. So we believe that the kind of self-declaration mechanism works. And last year, we've set uh, the requirement on as uh, two years who have stayed in Hong Kong um, continuously in the past two years. But then for this uh, latest round, because of the epidemic, uh, we uh, will discuss with the immigration department see whether this uh, period of uh, the restriction period of time should be um, changed or adjusted. Mr. Lam, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, there are quite a lot of breakthrough um, thinking in your bus budget, and it is pretty comprehensive. But then for the relief measures for the uh, grassroots people or low-income groups because of the epidemic. Many of them have not been able to uh, go to work or to earn money during this period. So I think that uh, the relief measures for these group of people have not been adequate. So I hope that it can be adjusted or in increased. And for the uh, rental uh, uh, moratorium, I 
agree that it should be imposed because there are a lot of um, small and medium-sized enterprises who have been hot hit by the epidemic. And there are a lot of funding that will be uh, given to the infrastructure projects. But then we have been talking about uh, building Hong Kong into a smart city. You mentioned that uh, in the coming um, three years, uh, there will be uh, $600 million will be injected to conduct, conduct an audit um, among different government departments to see how well they go in um, uh, conducting their IT enhancement or using uh, technology to enhance their work. Well, in the coming three years, uh, there are a lot of um, uh, funding injection on infrastructure projects. But then if these projects are very low in IT, so uh, these projects are may not be very satisfactory because they are, they are so low in IT content. So what do you think of that? For the one-off measures, be they CSSA, uh, an additional of uh, half a month of CSSA payment, or the um, uh, tax exemption of uh, 10000 or $20,000, in considering these factors, we have to look at the overall picture, not just the measures itself. We have to strike a balance and we have to consider different factors. In the past two years or so, the um, grassroots citizens have been most hardly hit. But then not all of them are under the CSSA um, net, the security net. About uh, two years ago, we have a, uh, a mechanism or a measures which shows that for the person who are not CSSA recipient, who are not living in public housing, they are eligible to apply for this fund and then we will top up the, the payment to um, up to $4,000. Uh, dollars. So eventually, there were about 3 million people who were eligible to apply for that additional fund. So in other words, if I just um, added the CSSA payment, that means that this group of people will be overlooked because they are the recipients. So, and that is why now we would like to include them and everybody uh, will be eligible for the $10,000 and then we'll, this is how we try to make our effort to cover this group of people who have been, may have been overlooked. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Chen. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'll, on behalf of the Trade Federation, I'll, like to thank the secretary for um, taking heed of our advice to uh, disperse ten thousand dollars to each uh, eligible persons in Hong Kong. We had conducted meetings with the financial secretary. We had held uh, press conferences to fight for this, and eventually, the financial secretary had taken heed of our advice, and we would like to thank him for that. Well, basically, the elderly people would uh, use the octopus to obtain that uh, the money. Would you consider using uh, for the people to use octopus to receive that uh, relief, uh, the, the ten thousand dollars as well? We could also draw reference from other cities. For instance, we could collaborate with different trades. For instance, uh, um, for certain um, trades, uh, people can use the consumption voucher, the $10,000 value of consumption vouchers, and it could uh, represent a value of, um, say, $30,000. You could collaborate with different trades to do that. And uh, for this new round of the anti-epidemic funds, um, there are only about um, 
27 billion dollars however the Cathay pacific have been able to receive uh, uh, much more than that from the government to help them tide over the storm so will you consider that this uh, new round of uh, relief measures could tie in with the uh, universal compulsory testing. For instance, you can start registration in March, people can register with their ID card, and then uh, they can use it uh, as early as April. But then for those who do not uh, participate in the testing, uh, in the compulsory testing scheme, they will not be eligible to receive this money. For those who have immigrated and will not be spending in Hong Kong will be able to save them up and be able to not to uh, waste our resources. Also, this is a proposal for you. I'd like to ask if the financial secretary will consider my views. Financial secretary, on operation, I'll defer to my colleague, uh, Ms. Jesse Wong. Thank you. The 3,000 cap for octopus uh, does not uh, affect how we issue the consumption vouchers. The octopus card itself may have some uh, storage and actually you will be able to tap your octopus for many times. It doesn't matter how much money there is in remaining in the octopus card. As long as it's lower than $3,000, then you'll be able to tap your octopus and to receive the consumption voucher. So that does not affect how, the, um, how you use the octopus card as to whether we can target uh, those industries that have been heavily impacted by the epidemic. We are trying to convenient the uh, public We have been considering in the second round, and there would be uh, briefings this afternoon. We are going to meet with the industries. I'd like to uh, hear about uh, the connection or the link up with the universal testing. Well, I suggest at this stage not to do that. We are talking about universal testing. So for those who do not abide by the law, there would be a penalty. The consumption voucher, however, will be dispersed in April in accordance with the registered information. Therefore, it would be much quicker. We do not want to link up these two. Otherwise, the process will be slowed down. I do not think we should link these two up, but thank you for your suggestion. Mr. Uh, Dr. Loy Kwok, four minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, FS. Well, in this budget, we see the issuance of $10,000 in consumption voucher, in also in uh, tax ex exemption, etc. I mean, tax deduction. So the uh, DAB is in support of these proposals. I'd like to talk about infrastructure-led development. This time, the Secretary has also suggested an infrastructure-led development and to promote infrastructure from all perspectives. And in order to, um, to help the construction industry to inject about $1.2 billion in the construction in construction industry and to help with training. I hope that the government will continuously roll out these construction courses to nurture new talents so that the construction sector will not be too busy at one time and be out of jobs at other times. The construction industry is once again uh, facing a stop to their uh, jobs, the government should really try to help them survive during these difficult times. I also hope that the government will be able to extend the completion time 
and to waive the penalty for delays in construction during these times. Uh, so we see for government construction works, there is actually an extension of six months. And for cost increase incurred from these uh, constructions, I believe that we really should have the government uh, provide some support to survive and over and ride out this challenge. Thank you, Dr. Loi Kwok. Construction work or period being extended during the, uh, the epidemic is something we have been considering. Uh, we would look into how we can support the industry. Many years ago, we have already seen busy times and uh, for the construction industry at times and out of jobs at other times. Looking forward, we estimate that there'll be about uh, 80 billion to about a hundred, 80 billion to about 100 billion uh, public works in the next five years. I am sure that the workload will remain high in the next few years. Uh, we are using MIC and also increasing resources to provide training. We also want to ensure uh, workers have enough jobs for a particular uh, skill set. There may be a need to import labor and when needed, we will discuss with the Legislative Council. Thank you. Thank you, Financial Secretary. We do have many uh, requests and the FS has addressed our concerns uh, such as uh, waiving uh, registration fees and not to say an increase of consumption vouchers to $10,000. I'm sure many people are happy to see this increase. You are, you are going to issue the first $5,000 in April. However, the epidemic is still ongoing. So these $5,000 may only benefit supermarkets. I am sure that if you issue the other 5000 after the epidemic, that would be much more useful in boosting the economy. I'd like to talk about the uh, rental enforcement moratorium for three months. It may be useful uh, during this time because many face the pressure of high rent. Uh, this moratorium can really help some uh, small uh, tenants because uh, some tenants believe that they'll be able to settle a better rental agreement with landlords at this moment. For some uh, tenants or landlord, they are actually uh, still paying out their uh, mortgage. Would the banks actually be chasing for their rent? I understand that uh, this would be put into legislation soon, which is unprecedented. Can you also formulate legislation to help our tenants who pay up their rent first and then to roll out AEF 7.0 to help those in need. FS, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Su uh, We have uh, talked with the financial services and treasury about the rental enforcement moratorium. 
for landlords who face challenges. Uh, in pay, repaying the principal, we would uh, be relaxed in handling that. We hope that with this moratorium, to provide an opportunity for landlords and tenants to sit down together and discuss the way forward. The market is very quiet right now. And when tenants move out, landlords will not receive the rent anyways. And we do not want tenants who cannot pay their rent to affect landlords as well. We hope that both sides will ride out the storm together. Mr. Tommy Chen. Mr. Tommy Chung, are you here? Can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to follow up on Mr. Sue's questions. As we are both from the Liberal Party, we have the uh, same similar views. For paragraph 117 in the budget on the rental enforcement moratorium, you're really uh, brave to raise this controversial issue at this moment. We, however, are in support of this moratorium. It would especially help SMEs. However, in your response to Mr. Xu, I have raised to you in the past few years, the two plus two, which is the government paying two months rent and the landlord exempting two months rent. The catering industry in the first four months have lost half a year of business. Even if the catering business is able to resume in April, how will the tenants be able to repay the rent from January to April? The landlord will still be pursuing rent after the restaurants reopen. Financial Secretary, I hope you not just stay, uh, you I hope you not be adamant in refusing to help pay rent for the tenants. It should be a two plus two measure. Many in our business are afraid that we won't see an AEF 7.0. I thought that uh, you would earmark money for AEF in the Legislative Council last time and not to include it in the budget. So what are your views on that, Secretary? Thank you, Chairman. Well, Mr. Chang's uh, suggestion, uh, we have actually uh, taken into consideration and uh, we have done what we could do in the budget. For this round of um, COVID outbreak, it has brought about a lot of uh, bad influences on our economy. Our society has been hardly hit, but then with the support of the central government, the Hong Kong 
government is working very hard to try to weather the storm. And the people of Hong Kong will go through universal um, compulsory testing. We hope that we're able to con contain um, the spread of the epidemic in the coming two months. So uh, the introduction of the rental moratorium is based on this consideration. We hope to be able to buy some time for both the tenants and the owners. Well, during this time, the tenants will be able to uh, have some window for breathing. They will be allowed uh, to delay the payment of the rent. Of course, it has to be uh, paid back uh, after the situation um, is improved. And both the owners and the tenants have to work together to uh, weather the storm. For the AEF, we have already introduced two rounds. And in the present budget, uh, there are different measures introduced. So at the present moment, Uh, whether there will be AEF 7.0, I think this is something for reconsideration uh, to for consideration later on. Mr. Rock Chen, uh, thank you, Chairman. Good morning, Secretary. You mentioned uh, quite a bit about the rental moratorium and the three plus three measures. I'm happy to see that the government has uh, some corresponding measures. Uh, to uh, relieve um, people's hardship. But then you mentioned that uh, after six months, the tenants can discuss with the owner to see how the outstanding rental could be paid paid up. But then if the owner, um, if they cannot come to a consensus, uh, what would the situation be? Would there be a lot of disputes between the owners and the tenants if they cannot reach a consensus after six months? And then, for this six months uh, of moratorium, would you consider asking the owners and the tenants to have a kind of to split the the bills uh, uh, within that six months according to the business income? Well, that is really for both the owners and the tenants to uh, work out the solution and. Also, I wonder why uh, you have not considered helping the small and the uh, micro enterprises because they are the group that is most hardly hit. And I'd like to thank the secretary for uh, accepting a lot of advice uh, put forth by the DAB, and which can be reflected in the budget. Thank you. Through the rental moratorium measure, we hope that both the owners and the tenants can Sit, to get, sit down and then find a solution. We are not encouraging the tenants not to pay rents. It's just that uh, because we understand that because of the epidemic, um, many uh, small companies or the tenants have not will, will have financial difficulty to pay rent. And that's why we hope that they will have about six months to uh, sit down and think of a way to solve the problem together. It is uh, just like a kind of a rearranging of loans. Well, Mr. Chen mentioned that uh, whether uh, the both the owners and the tenants can split the bills according to the uh, the business income within the six months. Well, this is yeah, well, this is one of the solutions. However, in the market, there are different kinds of tenants and different owners. So I think uh, it will be most more appropriate for them, for the owner, specific owner, and their tenants to sit down together and discuss how um, or to work out a solution that uh, fit them best. And then for the the funding, should it uh, first go to the payment of um, salaries and wages of the uh, employees?
Well, last year when we were rolling out the uh, employment protection measures uh, the, after the first and the second round, we've heard different views and suggestions and feedbacks. So for the current round, we believe that uh, there should be uh, considerable adjustments in order to meet the needs of the different stakeholders. And this is based on the observations and the feedbacks that we have received from the previous rounds. So this is an extensive exercise. Uh, we have tried our very best to uh, solve the most imminent uh, problems and urgent problems first. Mr. Yu Pang Yang. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Secretary, for accepting the views of our trade. And uh, you have uh, set aside $1.26 billion to support uh, the tourism industry. We thank you for that. Yes, the tourism industry is really very weak and re uh, during this time, and we really need the continued support of the government, especially during this very hard, uh, difficult time. It's like an ice age for our industry. The biggest problem is uh, first rental, second is the um, salaries for our employee. I have questions for the secretary. In the past two years, we have uh, been fighting very hard uh, to ask for the owners to uh, reduce or to have a rental moratorium, but it is very difficult to achieve success. Well, for the um, uh, travel agencies, uh, very often they, their offices are, are opened in the commercial buildings, and then the owner has been very strict, and uh, they would uh, apply the same policies to all the tenants across the board in the same building. So it has been very difficult for our um, uh, colleagues, for the travel agencies to obtain a rental reduction or even uh, a moratorium. Well, the present measure for the uh, the rental moratorium measure uh, is welcomed by our industry. This it will give us some time to breathe. However, um, we find that uh, the travel agencies has not been uh, included in a lot of um, designated uh, uh, premises or designated trade. Uh, it is also very important for us to retain uh, personnel in our industry. So we have been uh, reflecting our views to this chief executive and to you, the secretary, or to the financial secretary, that uh, perhaps uh, there should be special measures to help out uh, the people who have uh, run out of jobs because of the epidemic, especially the people working in the tourism industry. Will you consider that, secretary? Well, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Yip. For the travel agency, well, they are included. Well, under the um, rental moratorium measures, uh, the uh, eateries, restaurants, uh, uh, childcare centers, uh, travel agencies, uh, schools, retail shops, uh, private tuition classes, um, interest groups, and also the um, premises conducting uh, travel businesses and also for um, popular music, uh, premises, conducted businesses in relation to uh, uh, laundry and uh, pop music, private tuition and so forth. So uh, this is quite comprehensive. And even um, for places that are for washing dishes and also places for rental to the culture and art group and also for the uh, retail of uh, the um, fresh produce and meat and so on. So all these uh, different trades conducting businesses in the, uh, different premises have been included. In the previous rounds of AEF, um, we do have uh, special help to the people uh, of the tourism industry. Next, uh, Dr. Dick Chi Yun. 
And before that, uh, it's uh, Mr. Chair Wei Chin, Mr. Yik Chi Ming, Mr. Lok Chong Hong, Deng Ka Piu, Yan Men Yu, Ms. Ronnie Chan, Ms. Hong Men. Next, Mr. Dick Thank you, Chair. Secretary, I'd like to thank you for your hard efforts. For the additional um, payment of half a month of CSSA, I think this is uh, just too little. I hope that it can be increased. In para 178, you mentioned that the government will uh, introduce a measure to uh, reduce um, expenditure, but then I hope that it will not uh, affect the operation of the NGO. A 1% of reduction of uh, uh, subsidies to the NGO, it's about $200 million, though. So that would uh, about 530, 530 social workers. So that means for each uh, NGO, they have to reduce three to four uh, persons. As we all know, the NGO are facing a very heavy workload and there are increasing uh, demands from society on their services. So if there's a 1% of uh, subsidy reduction, it will really affect their morale and also their actual operation. And also from the quality's point of view, I understand that the uh, frontline workers in the schools and in the hospitals, they do not need to face a reduction. Why is it that in this uh, social welfare enterprises, um, NG, especially the NGOs, they have to face this 1% reduction of their subsidies? I hope that um, um, you could take back this uh, measure. And second point, uh, well, we are like uh, fighting uh, a battle against the epidemic. We really hope to, to win this battle. Then after the battle, we have to consider a uh, reconstruction of our economy. Um, will the secretary be thinking about how we could uh, resume the economy and after the epidemic, we hope to hear something from you so that we can um, be more at ease because um, we hope to know that you have been thinking about this already. Thank you. Thank you, um, Dr. Tick, for your advice. You have uh, raised your advice to me on several occasions. We have actually uh, considered your views and Internally, we have conducted uh, discussions on that as well. For this 1% of reduction, it's uh, about $200 million. And uh, we have uh, issued uh, letters to different um, NGOs. And there are some uh, expenditure that will be maintained. So the uh, uh, government will try to absorb the expenditure on this kind of essential services. So we have actually asked all our government departments and offices to uh, have this 1% uh, of uh, expenditure reduction across the board. We have also considered your views. And so, well, last year after announcement of a reduction of 1%. For well, this year, we have not further uh, reduced the expenditure of the civil service. In the second half of the year, as you've mentioned, if the um, epidemic is controlled, if we can have cross-border um, traffic with the mainland, there will be a, a series of promotion activities to reboot our uh, economy. Well, I believe that, well, when that when the time comes, we'll be able to uh, resume our work. Thank you. Tony Tse. Thank you, Chairman. FS. Oh, I think this is quite a good budget. 
which could be supported because it can boost the economy and also to uh, provide anti-epidemic measures. So I believe that the uh, counter cyclical measures are very timely. However, there are a few points you could consider. I see that for SMEs, you have provided many, uh, many uh, support, and I would like to thank you for doing that. Other than supporting them, we must ensure that they are able to retain their jobs. The government is working on public works and it would exceed about 100 billion in coming years. Therefore, I hope that the tender would not be binding or, or would not be bundled. Instead, to allow more SMEs to tender for these projects. It's not under the only the Development Bureau. Other bureaus are also involved. Therefore, I hope that the FS and the Secretary for Financial Services and Treasury would also look into that. The economy is suffering at this moment, yet you're still looking for the lowest tender. Sometimes the tender becomes very low, yet quality is affected. We should not only look into cutting down the tender price. And with all this infrastructure coming up, it is a good direction to provide more training. The one billion for the industry is important, yet you have neglected nurturing talents in the tertiary institutes. You need different soldiers in an army. There is quite a clear direction for the medical industry that more university places should be offered. And this is something you can also um, attach importance to for the construction industry. Thank you, Mr. Zhe. How can we increase university places for the construction industry is something the EDB can look into. We also see high turnover in the medical sector. Therefore, in the budget, We are trying to provide more support to nurses and allied health professionals. We would follow up on your suggestion and for and we will follow up after the meeting. Mr. Frankie Yick. Now please turn on the microphone. Good morning, FS. Thank you for listening to our views and to waive many uh, utilities, including uh, pushing forward the uh, principal moratorium for loans. However, uh, we see many enterprises with a very low cash flow and the main expenditure is manpower. I hope you would once again roll out the uh, 
um, and employment subsidy. Now we see that uh, uh, many people are confirmed positive and, and some of them are preliminary positive, yet they cannot uh, go to work while waiting for the results. And this actually increased the expenditure on the side of the um, bosses of the employers because they have to pay their salary, yet the employees cannot come into work. The secretary has also said that uh, we need to find a way forward. You are now helping the tenants, yet you have forgotten about the small landlords. Well, you're able to only extend it for a total of uh, three months, which means that you can just uh, not pay your rent for about uh, six to eight months, and then you can leave after that. But then for the landlords, what can they do? They will not receive their rent at all. You suggested providing guidelines for the banks, but then what if the banks do not follow your orders because they are only guidelines? These guidelines would be strictly enforced for banks that treat uh, landlords unfairly. Please uh, tell us because we are going to follow up We see many good landlords, but then uh, some of the employers have been increasing the rent. This is why we take such a step. It is because of these sub uh, circumstances. We now look for a standstill arrangement. We all stop and try to find a way forward. Uh, for people who would like to rent or lease a place, they would need to pay a deposit. And many also need to sign a personal guarantee. And tenants still need to pay their rent. They just delay paying their rent. There is still legal ways in which the landlords can recover the rent. We just want everybody to take a step back and find a solution together. I have answered some of the questions, therefore I will not repeat. Uh, we know that uh, for some people, Um, just reducing salaries tax and providing rates concession are not significant support. Therefore, we believe the issuance of consumption vouchers would be much more efficient in rejuvenating the economy. Mr. Lok Chong Hong, thank you. Well, there are two points I'd like to raise to the FS. First of all, to thank FS for adopting our proposal from the FTU to enhance the investment in innovation and technology. The FS uh, talked about uh, strategic development in IT. Would that include uh, chips development as well, because some people are worried that the five billion is only a a small a small investment. The other is the Greater Bay Area Investment Fund of a five billion investment. Would you place more priority in? Hong Kong invested uh, projects uh, 
I agree with the FS to provide a three month rental enforcement moratorium because this will really help the catering business and also the tourism business. What mechanism would you use to encourage landlords, especially the top 10 landlords in Hong Kong, to reduce rent? What will the government do to persuade landlords to reduce rent? Would you be able to provide the public with statistics on what the government has achieved? Rent um, reduction can really help because uh, businesses then will not need to dismiss their employees. Thank you, Mr. Loka. Thank you for your valuable comments. The Strategic Development Investment Fund is to create an environment to create better job opportunities for Hong Kong people. I remember when I was consulting LegCo on the budget, more than one member mentioned on the goals in technological investment. We are not only looking at economic returns, we also want to see uh, more job opportunities, which is in line with our views. We've seen unicorns making a breakthrough in their research and Because of our previous mechanism, we were only able to invest in the early stages and then we would pull out. But then we see overseas companies investing into those unicorns and inviting them to move elsewhere. We hope that through strategic investment, These uh, Hong Kong unicorns nurtured locally will be encouraged to stay in Hong Kong and to continue their development here. Also, uh, providing job opportunities for people in Hong Kong. The Hong Kong Science Park can also attract companies to become stationed in Hong Kong. Through investment, uh, we sit on the boards of certain, um, on the HKSTPC and will be able to receive much more information in those different sectors. We need to be present to acquire such knowledge and that is conducive to our development. Well, uh, uh, after Mr. Tenka Pew speaks, then I would allow Mr. Yang Wenqiu to speak. Thank you. Um, I'm very happy to hear about the $10,000 consumption voucher, which is very timely. It can not only um, boost the economy, it can really uh, help us uh, pick up our job opportunities. So the $10,000 is very important. I have a couple of questions on that. The government is issuing I-bond for retirement. However, 
to observation, we find that 90% of those um, acquiring iPhones have investment background, but they may not only want to focus on iBond. Can we uh, draw reference from Singapore and also to use the MPF? We can actually require each uh, trustee to um, do that because many self-employed people are unwilling to open an MPF account because they do not see a stable return. Therefore, I ask the FS to consider this to provide a, a guaranteed MT MPF fund. Some IT people have told me that they use government support to research in um, disinfection and antivirus work. They have um, spent money on research, yet the government is not following up on, 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 on the support afterwards. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Tang. Regarding the investment scope of the MPF, well, it is uh, it has been enhancing. As Mr. Boy already mentioned, that um, these funds are now allowed to invest in certain kinds of um, bonds so that more steady yields could be uh, resulted. As we understand that there are different asset uh, management companies of a different kind of investments. Well, at that time, for those who acquire this kind of investment products, they would realize that the administrative cost is pretty high, so it's really not worthwhile. The um, management authority have already uh, rolled out a measure that is as a DIS uh, a fund, and the yield for that fund is quite reasonable. This is for those, especially for those who are not very experienced in investments. You ask whether there will be a, a kind of fund that would guarantee a part, a sort of 4.5% of yields. I, I really doubt whether any company uh, would be able to have that kind of products under this kind of economic situation. Well, what we can do is to provide um, uh, reliable and safe products, and then we consider monitoring the administrative uh, charge level so as to uh, guarantee the yields of the Hong Kong investors. Well, Secretary, how come the sec uh, Singapore government can do that? The Singapore MF uh, can do that. I don't uh, believe that any um, MFP, MPF fund can uh, have a continue, can guarantee that there will be a continuous yield of 4.5% uh, yearly. Thank you, Chairman. We have actually uh, put forth uh, 52 uh, suggestions to the FS. I uh, hope that the government can re. Uh, can invigorate the Hong Kong economy. And we'd like to thank the FS for accepting our advice. And there are several measures that are in line with our suggestions. For instance, the consumption vouchers of $10,000, the um, uh, and us also a number of uh, relief measures. And uh, this is good because um, I would really uh, rate seven to 80 marks uh, for this budget. If you are to uh, achieve 100 marks for your budget, I would suggest that you could uh, enhance or, um, or giving out uh, more relief measures for the people who, have, uh, who are out of job during these difficult times. And also the um, government housing, the reduction of rental. Yes, I am in support of that. And also the 
salaries tax, uh, which is capped at uh, ten thousand dollars, I think uh, it should be increased to twenty thousand dollars. And I also hope that there would be a tax reduction for employing um, uh, overseas helpers. Because I understand that there are a lot of middle class com uh, cl uh, households that have to employ um, uh, overseas domestic helpers. They, uh, there are a lot of costs involved. Um, there are also, uh, because of the social distancing measure and also quarantine requirements, the um, uh, employers have to pay a lot more for recruiting this kind of overseas domestic helpers. And I also hope that uh, there will be um, the funding given to uh, uh, procuring a lot more uh, anti-epidemic uh, kits and also gadgets and also uh, medication. Thank you. We have actually set aside enough money for buying uh, uh, medication, the antivirus and uh, medication. This, your suggestions will be, divert, uh, will be uh, given to the uh, relevant government departments for consideration. Regarding um, the employment uh, support measures. I've already answered uh, other members regarding that. I will not repeat myself. For the unemployed uh, relief measure, we have uh, decided to give out a ten thousand dollars relief measures for those who are uh, out of job during the epidemic uh, period. We have actually extended the application period. And the applicant can uh, have a loan uh, as much as 90% of his latest uh, income, uh, which is capped at $10,000. And he uh, is required to uh, repay the loan first, uh, uh, to repay the loan interest first. And this is a way to help them out during the difficult time. And also regarding um, tax uh, rebate for the middle class, we have to consider the entire situation because if we are going to introduce this only to the middle class, say for instance, ten thousand to twenty thousand dollars, that would uh, be th only th those who are uh, comparatively more well off will be benefited. Um, Last year, we uh, reduced it from $20,000 to $10,000. We thought that there would be more people uh, paying tax. However, eventually, it turned out that there, would, there were less people uh, paying tax. That is after the tax exemption. For those uh, taxable income are below $400,000, there are 60,000 people less. So that means the uh, epidemic, the middle class, uh, middle income group have been most hardly hit. So if the tax exemption could not actually benefit them, we believe that the uh, consumption voucher would be more direct in helping them out during the difficult times. And this is uh, our basis for consideration. Mr. Ronnie Chen. Thank you, Chairman. Evers, uh, the citizen of Hong Kong and also different trades have been very hardly hit during the epidemic, as you can see. And uh, your relief measures are most welcome. And I'm happy to see that you would put in money to help the small and um, medium enterprises and also the uh, new businesses. And I support you for that. And I'm very happy to know that you have uh, uh, taken heed of the advice of uh, our members. For instance, there are 100% uh, guarantee of a loan, um, loan guarantee. And I'm very thankful that you are able to face these new challenges. I have a number of questions for you. Regarding the uh, cumulative um, rating system, well, the landlord will be paying the next round of um, the next rate. So they may uh, raise appeals and you, the number of appeals related to these will, I think, increase significantly. So is the government department going to increase manpower to handle these additional cases? And on para 90, you mentioned that there will be a Greater Bay Area Investment Fund. Of course, I welcome this initiative from the government. 
But then my question is that for this fund, will it, uh, what sort of areas will it focus on uh, uh, investing? Will it be on IT, healthcare, or what? Now there will be um, eight um, uh, bodies, eight groups who would be looking, taking care of um, these, the management of this fund. Will in the future you increase the number of these monitoring bodies? Uh, Ms. Chi, the Permanent Secretary, will uh, talk about that in further detail. Ms. Chi, uh, thank you, Chair. Regarding a cumulative rating scheme, uh, we have put aside ad adequate uh, resources for for them to increase uh, more manpower and also uh, uh, the necessary infrastructure, let's say, uh, computer systems and so forth. Mr. Hui? Yes, I understand that uh, Mr. Chen would like to know if uh, there are any specific areas or in, in appointing a GP, uh, what would be their backgrounds and whether they have experience in the uh, GBA investment. For the eight GPs, uh, they have very uh, extensive experience because for the mandate that we have given them, it is on Hong Kong Nexus. Uh, this is very wide because Hong Kong is an international city and it is um, a financial hub as well. So. Uh, in the past, in, for investment, we had invested in uh, technology, innovation, uh, logistics, and healthcare, so, so, and so forth. So, it is very the scope is very wide, and we hope that uh, through the experience of these various GPs, um, they will be able to bring in new insights, and also we will be able to benefit from their past experience. So for the GBA uh, investment fund, we will be looking for people who have experience on this front so as to um, enlarge our, the basis of our uh, investment. Uh, Mr. Nganman, thank you, Chairman. I'd like to thank the FS for accepting the advice of the DAB, especially on the um, uh, reduction of uh, rents. And uh, I have questions for the FS. The government of the SAR has a very uh, important responsibility of redistributing wealth in society. However, uh, for the present measures, I understand that the uh, assistance to the low-income families are not adequate because of the epidemic, um, the people living in public housings and the lo the, they are low-income groups, they have been hardly hit, they, many of them are unemployed or underemployed. So they have to rely on the um, working uh, family subsidies. Uh, now it is only uh, about a half a month subsidy, addition of half a month subsidy to these group of people. I think this is uh, vastly inadequate. I'd like to ask the FS, what, how come you cannot put in uh, more effort in helping these um, um, low income groups? Uh, they are, uh, the, the family members are working and then how come they are not able to uh, benefit more from your relief measures? Thank you, Mr. Yang. For the people living in public uh, housing, um, this year we do not uh, have uh, the kind of rental wave uh, for them and neither do we have that last year. Well, actually people have different views in society. We are, do understand that people living in uh, public housing are low income groups, but then at the same time in society, we heard voices saying that those living in a public housing have already enjoyed substantial uh, benefits from uh, the government. With limited resources, if we want to help as many people as possible, we should perhaps, as I've mentioned just now, try to cover a bigger group of people, cover a wider scope, for instance, through consumption voucher, through uh, giving subsidy on transport so that people, uh, so that we can subsidize their transportation costs. So we have to strike a balance and this is a difficult um, problem. For people who are underemployed, well, we, as we can see that uh, the uh, 
labor department have uh, relevant measures. For instance, um, they have lowered the uh, minimum working hours for people applying for these uh, relief funds. If there are ways for improvement, for enhancing our measures, uh, your views are most welcome. Well, FS, I understand that uh, you mentioned uh, that consumption vouchers and other measures will be able to cover a bigger, a wider scope. But then I think it is important for the government to support the low income group. And I think they should have uh, additional help when compared to other groups of people. I think that this half a month of a rental waiver is, or, uh, is not adequate. Thank you for your suggestion. However, from the perspective of redistribution of wealth, the spectrum covered is much higher than the working family allowance. But I don't think um, um, it will quite work. As for unemployed, the 100% uh, loan guarantee is uh, to support those unemployed because when they apply for the uh, guarantee, the banks will uh, try their best to assist them. It is already mentioned in the budget. Dr. Wendy Hong. Thank you. Distributing consumption vouchers uh, will really uh, help. However, it is not a very it is not fair because it would not cover non-permanent residents. Uh, can you also try to distribute them to those who have contributed in the past year? I am concerned with the future. So I agree that more investment should be put in innovation and technology, but then there is uh, 20 billion that is not restricted to IT. Perhaps uh, you could consider putting them in the uh, nurturing of um, other in industries because not everyone can join in the IT industry. We could also uh, suggest um, helping those uh, that help with the upstream industry. In the last decades, Hong Kong has always been um, investing uh, foreign direct investments into the greater Bay Area. How can we really realize this uh, strategy to its full potential? I hope you're able to think of it from a different perspective to set up a greater Bay Area hub in Hong Kong and to attract a greater Bay Area anchor companies such as Huawei, uh, Tencent, uh, Xinfei to come into Hong Kong. Uh, the budget will also support startups, but then out of 100 startups, only two will succeed. We should try to attract those that are already uh, mature in the industry into Hong Kong, and that will be conducive to the development of upstream industries in Hong Kong. I hope that the Greater Bay Area Investment Fund will always try to think out of the box and to attract um, companies into Hong Kong. And we can also uh, work with the Hong Kong growth portfolio to uh, attract into other companies or to request come overseas companies to come into Hong Kong and to bring more development opportunities into Hong Kong. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Hong. On consumption vouchers, I would defer to Ms. Jessie Wong. Uh, thank you. Yes, we do agree that uh, overseas and mainland people coming to work in Hong Kong is contributing to society. We are looking into how non-permanent residents can be covered in the consumption vouchers and yet uh, still be fair. 
how about uh, for those who have been um, paying taxes? Uh, can you try to set that as a requirement? Well, yes, because um, uh, people start working in Hong Kong at different times of the year, and even if we link this up with the tax return, uh, we need to set up a uh, set up the boundaries of whether we're including those who are uh, residents here or those who are only here to work. We need to ensure that uh, we are fair to all because other non-permanent residents may find that unfair. Uh, please allow me a bit more time, uh, FS, because I'm sure that other members are interested in Dr. Hong's second question. Uh, because uh, uh, there are uh, different uh, legal considerations for the first part of Dr. Hong's question. I'll ask Ms. Wong to communicate with Dr. Hong afterwards. Uh, for the investment fund, uh, we are able to meet the suggestions of Dr. Hong. First of all, Hong Kong is part of the Greater Bay Area, and of course, the Greater Bay Area Investment Fund could be put to use in Hong Kong. The projects may not bring high returns, but then it may bring job opportunities and be uh, strategically uh, poised in future development. When I was answering another member's question, I also said that we are looking into the strategy of attracting overseas companies into Hong Kong. FS, FS time is up. I'm sorry, your time is up because a minute has uh, passed. Professor Nelson Lam. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I am in support of the budget, and I agree with the point uh, given by the FS that it should be a people-oriented uh, budget. So I would like to respond by asking everyone to stay vigilant and healthy and to uh, fight the pandemic together. Uh, this year, we still witness a surplus, or actually I could say that we are on a fine line between deficit and surplus, so we can be a bit more forward-looking. And the FS has actually achieved it, this goal. Well, some members have brought out a hot topic. I can analyze it uh, from three points on the anti-epidemic efforts. 60 billion has been earmarked, and the mainland has also helped us in uh, building uh, facilities. Uh, can part of the money be given to the mainlanders who come over to help? Because I see that um, uh, the colleagues uh, from uh, Suzhou should actually enjoy better hospitality. And I agree with FS on consumption vouchers. Many members have asked about um, those people who have already moved out of Hong Kong. Why do we still need to ish or disperse $10,000 to them when they do not want to stay in Hong Kong? So there is still a loophole. I actually want our members to be more generous since we are giving um, all these consumption vouchers, perhaps you should also give it to the, those who have moved out and let them use the 10,000 when they return. On building a future together, I agree that it's important to nurture talents and to open up more land supply. You have earmarked 100 billion for that. Do you have a 
preliminary estimate on how much return there will be. Well, I also support uh, land out tomorrow because every time we um, open up new land for use, we would make money. I just want to know how much. We are grateful to uh, people from all parts of mainland to support our anti-epidemic work. Most of the work, most of the money uh, for anti-pandemic efforts are focused on that. As for the northern metropolis, we are going to use the money to, op uh, to uh, open up land and to work on transport and infrastructure because uh, transportation and infrastructure are very important. When well established, more people will be willing to move over to those areas. The distance is actually not too far with a strong transportation network. At this moment, the we do not know how many stages the development of Northern Metropolis will be. But internally, uh, we do have a return requirement. And once it meets the return requirements, we'll be able to uh, commence the project. Uh, Mr. Sunny Tan, thank you. Uh, thank you, FS, for your support to Hong Kong people. I'm really very grateful. And uh, many members have also talked about the uh, one uh, the ten thousand consumption voucher. I'm happy to see that the government has accepted our views. On. Um, on the AEF 7.0 in paragraph 27, I'd like to give you an example. Let's say for a restaurant, uh, we'll uh, get a 300,000 in AEF 6.0 and they received uh, 150,000 in the third round of AEF. So if you use that uh, in your calculation, it actually shows that uh, the support can only last till March. So for the support of these uh, uh, designated premises, I am afraid that the support will not be enough. For those directly affected, uh, they would see issues with their finances. So uh, you must uh, explore whether the funds given are necessary are enough for them to last till April. In paragraph 58, I see that um, there will be a technology startup support scheme, but then many uh, uh, many uh, projects will work in upgrading and transitioning. Well, those are also considered startups as well. I hope that you would also be able to include um, those in the funding. And in paragraph 91 on art and culture, we want to tell the story of China and Hong Kong. Uh, actually, textile industry is very unique in Hong Kong. I hope that you are able to include that as well. And in paragraph 118, the uh, TDC will also uh, allocate funding of 135 million uh, for the introduction of the support scheme for pursuing development in the mainland. I hope that uh, GCIC will also um, be willing to take up more risk to uh, promote the development on the mainland. Otherwise, it will not be done. But um, in general, I'm really in support of the ECIC support. Thank you, Mr. Tan. 
as mentioned by Mr. Tan, in the budget we have different kinds of measures. And actually, uh, Mr. Tan have given us a lot of valuable advice. And regarding the uh, new measures rolled out by ECIC, it's actually based very much on the views uh, put forward by Mr. Tan. Regarding whether the um, AF um, support is adequate, yes, we have heard your views and we will uh, monitor very closely and then consider at a later date. Re Regarding uh, support to uh, enterprises and companies other than the startups and for the Greater Bay Area Investment Fund, Hong Kong is included, is covered by this. And the contents raised by uh, Mr. Tan will be further considered. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, the uh, upgrading of traditional um, enterprises. Yes, we look at not just at their uh, returns, but also the social contribution, the uh, support or the importance that they will give out to the long-term development of Hong Kong will be considered as well. And regarding the quality um, industries of Hong Kong, for instance, uh, textile industries, yes, we I agree that we should uh, look further into that. And for uh, brand building, uh, Hong Kong brands, building of Hong Kong brands and so forth, yes, we would consider that as well. Thank you very much. Mr. Kenneth Leung. Thank you, Chair. Well, in the budget, I think uh, it has taken into consideration uh, of the ways to relieve the imminent, uh, to relieve the hardship of the Hong Kong people at the short run, but also have a consideration for the midterm and long-term development of Hong Kong. However. There is no specific uh, section on the support to young people. I initially was quite uh, disappointed, but then from para 43 onwards, I um, learned that um, there are mentioned of uh, young people. And I agree to the line that uh, the young people find it very hard to um, give full play to their potentials in uh, this difficult time. I'd like to thank the FS for uh, understanding the difficult situation that the young people are facing right now. There are a lot of uh, different measures to provide uh, development opportunities for the young people. But then very often the measures uh, would be helpful to the people already working in certain um, industries or a certain sector. I think the Continuous Development Fund uh, is actually not adequate. Well, um, the uh, Continuous education support is actually quite inadequate. I understand that a lot of young people may need to uh, further study so as to uh, enhance themselves and join other um, industries. So I wonder whether this kind of subsidy could be increased, say, for instance, for um, 10000 or $20,000 more so that they could enroll in different courses to upgrade themselves. I've also written to the FS. Uh, requesting for uh, special funding to support the um, education of uh, this, um, and the implementation of national education. Thank you, Mr. Leung. Regarding the support to the development of young people, yes, uh, this is an important issue, and I am sure that uh, we will have um, a lot of other opportunities to discuss with uh, Mr. Leung uh, regarding this. We do have uh, room for further improvement. We will further listen to your views and so that we can give further support to the development of our young people. Well, in the budget, uh, as you've learned that uh, we will uh, provide uh, $135 million in different phases to the DTDC so that uh, they can uh, support young people of Hong Kong to live and work in the Greater Bay Area. And also, if they face difficulties, they can uh, seek help from the TDC. 
And for national education, we have uh, set aside funding for the uh, home affairs uh, department. They would uh, set up different uh, district networks. Uh, there are substantial um, funding for them to uh, implement these work. There will be different projects um, that are to be implemented through the home affairs uh, departments. So I believe that they will have um, adequate funding to enhance national education in the districts. Uh, I think uh, we should uh, try to work on these measures first at this stage and then further consider other measures in due course. Ms. Uh, Chen, uh, Ms. Judy Chen. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, uh, FS, for your budget. Uh, I, we really agree to the major uh, direction of the budget, and uh, we agree that you have actually paved the road for um, the uh, economic recovery of Hong Kong. And we're glad to see that you have taken into consideration the views put forth by the MPP. And also, especially regarding the um, enhancement measures for the low-lying areas, and there are great demands for that. And I see that in the budget, you have included our views, and uh, there will be specific measures uh, rolled out to tackle the problem. Well, another point is about uh, the families. Um, you have set aside um, various resources to help people during this difficult time. I am in support of that, but I also hope that these measures could be implemented ASAP so that the people of Hong Kong can enjoy that and can really have that to help them um, face the storm. For the $10,000 of consumption vouchers, I think, uh, have you actually overlooked uh, the hardship of the people who have uh, children in a household. For instance, in a family, if they have um, a kid, uh, uh, you will find that there will be different kinds of expenditures, especially during the uh, pandemic. Um, these costs have risen a lot. Uh, we have to pay tuition fees, school bus, and also uh, we have to pay for domestic helpers. And in the present budget, there is no uh, tax uh, exemption for uh, a uh, hiring of uh, domestic helpers. And for families that have children, we will have to spend extra money to buy uh, anti-epidemic um, uh, um, uh, kits. And I hope that you can cover uh, uh, all eligible people in Hong Kong, including those under the age of 18. Take, for example, uh, the, the situation in Macau. They actually for babies, for newborn babies, their parents can actually uh, apply for these newborn babies to uh, receive the consumption uh, subsidies. I hope that you can draw reference uh, from Macau and reconsider this measure. FS. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Judy, for your suggestions. Indeed, uh, this is a very difficult uh, measure, we have to strike a balance. Your views are, are heard. Well, Evans, we actually don't need $10,000. If it is difficult, a, a couple of thousand dollars would be enough to help out those families who have uh, children. Yes, thank you for your advice. Um, uh, I'm sorry that at this stage, uh, the, uh, we do have some difficulties. Ms. Elizabeth Kwok. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Evans. You, uh, as uh, you have heard, there are a lot of commendation for your present budget. In development of digital economy, I am in full support of that. And I, I'm very glad to see that you have increased support to the development of uh, uh, innovation and technology, and also about the strategic uh, um, uh, innovation technology fund. I hope that it will cover not just local startups, but also those in the mainland and also the overseas startups that are interested in um, setting up their businesses in Hong Kong. Well, I think this is uh, the right way to go. And I really hope to see that we can attract more collaborators. Now we have eight uh, collaborators, and I hope that there will be more coming, especially those who have experienced in investing in the uh, G, G, uh, GBA. That will be very helpful to us. And I'm also in support of your uh, suggestions of uh, uh, rolling out uh, the uh, comprehensive uh, audit 
uh, regarding the um, digitalization of the government uh, departments in the coming three years, $600 million will be earmarked for this exercise. However, I think just auditing is not adequate. Would you put a, a set aside some money in uh, so as to develop um, a smart city as well? Because in the budget, I've noticed that there is no um, earmarked fund for government departments to implement uh, strategies to uh, to develop Hong Kong as a smart city, because uh, if there is no designated fund, the, the different departments uh, may not have the incentive to do that, or they may have to spend more time to apply for additional funding on that. Regarding the uh, consumption vouchers, well, yes, that's a good thing. And then for rental enforcement moratorium, a lot of SME are worried that three to six months uh, is not enough because after six months they have to uh, pay up their outstanding rents. And then the landlords also find it not uh, reasonable. Well, will the others consider a drawing reference from Singapore? Because in Singapore, they have a rental assistance scheme. Uh, for the landlords, they have to pay 15% property tax to the government. If this 15% uh, of property tax can be uh, rebated, and then the landlords have to uh, uh, give this 15% of rebate, uh, plow back to uh, the tenants. That might be more than one month of rental. That will be more reasonable, and both parties will find it more um, fair and then they will not suffer any losses. Well, the government may uh, incur a loss uh, from the taxation, but then uh, I, would you consider enhancing your present uh, scheme so that there will be less dispute and you'll be able to really help those uh, who are in need? You have a, a quite a number of questions. I may, not have, I may not have enough time to answer them all. I will perhaps... Uh, and talk about the uh, rental enforcement moratorium. Actually, the Hong Kong situation is a bit different from that in Singapore, because if uh, the it is, uh, the landlord is a company, then the rental received will be uh, mixed up with the profits tax. So there is technical difficulties. Uh, it is difficult for the landlord to uh, give back the 15% tax rebate to the tenants because it is difficult to 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 see where the lines are drawn because uh, and also they may have uh, different tenants during the time so it is uh, very complicated it's uh, difficult to enforce and uh, regarding the uh, audit i would like to ask uh, mr hui to answer your question yes uh, i agree um, indeed um, we really have to, to uh, encourage our government departments to um, um, step up with their digitalization um, efforts. So we have been doing this in the past years. Uh, we no, uh, identified two pain points, first on data, second on the procedures, for instance, the workflows, work processes, and so forth. And these are the pain points. and. And the government, various government departments have to handle a very heavy workload on these two areas. So we plan to uh, collaborate with the uh, Hong Kong Productivity Council so that uh, our departments can uh, have access to the fintech or tech companies' uh, proposals, those various proposals put forward by the fin uh, local fintech companies. So we hope that there will be matching sessions so that the data on data and on process management, uh, our departments can enhance on these. Thank you. I know that uh, the FS has a very tight schedule today, and we still have a lot of people uh, in line. Uh, uh, would you like to stay? Could you stay for 15 minutes more? Okay, yes. The last four would be Mr. Chen Han Tan, uh, Mr. Chao Siu Chong, uh, Mr. Liang He, and also uh, Ms. Uh, Eunice Yong. Mr. Chen Han Tan. Thank you. Well, you have. Uh, taken into consideration many views given by the 
D A B We hope that you were able to reduce the threshold of the public transport support subsidy to two hundred dollars and uh, and you finally uh, done so because you'll be able to benefit about three million people and this is something uh, you should really consider to make it into a long term policy instead of just adopting it for a short period of time. So would you consider making this a long term policy? Secondly, on the relaxing of mortgage. So now yesterday, I saw that many of the landlords are now counter offering. So would that actually under the new policy affect the uh, property prices on whether we can make a public transport support subsidy a long term policy this is something we'll need to consider in detail well in 2019 uh, we did relax the mortgage insurance and at that time, the market price actually did not increase with that change. Starting from September last year, the property market has been a bit quiet and it rebounded a bit in November and now it is moving stably. The Federal Reserve will increase interest, therefore we are not too optimistic about the first quarter. At this rate, people will be a bit more prudent. You might have seen commentators uh, forecasting market price, and they have actually been quite cautious. We have heard many views. that some young professionals have the capability to um, purchase a, a, a unit. And some young couples or young families would also like to purchase their own property. We do not want to affect the market prices too much. We'll be able to see in the next uh, three to four years that uh, first-hand property will be at an all-time high supply. And in the upcoming five years, with around 190,000 units being built, we decided to first relax it a bit to let everyone absorb the information. For those who are interested in buying their own property, then they should be cautious in going forward. This is just another option for them. Thank you. Mr. Chao Siu Chong, thank you. I'd like to express my overall support for the budget, especially in consumption vouchers and rent enforcement moratorium and extending the subsidy for the unemployed. I'd like to express my gratitude to the FS for that. However, you were not able to raise uh, more specific 
anti-epidemic measures to help those affected, especially the frontline workers. In the past year, uh, we were uh, we've seen a small rebound in the economy, and you were able to see about uh, twenty billion in surplus. But now everyone is in troubled waters. The public hopes the government will help and support them during these difficult times. Would you review your budget and provide more comprehensive support for the most affected, that is the frontline workers, uh, such as the restaurant workers, or for those who are temporarily unemployed due to the closure of certain premises. The consumption voucher must be widened in scope. You cannot only ask um, the public to to use it in certain areas because many of them would like it to spend it elsewhere during these difficult times. FS. The 100% guarantee scheme can also help those who are temporarily unemployed. Although we still see about uh, 18 billion in, reserve, in surplus this year, we have been issuing bonds and there are also uh, 20 billion from housing and also another spending that added together will, will, see, will bring us a deficit next year. If we include the issuance of bonds and the recovery from the housing, then you would see a deficit of about 100 billion. We are trying to do our best to provide support, but at the same time, we must be vigilant in the future. The external market can also affect our economy. Hence, we must ensure the stability of our economy. We try our best uh, to stabilize the economy. Mr. Edward Lung, thank you. Uh, thank you for responding to your needs for the dispersing of consumption vouchers uh, from the view of the DAB. Uh, this is a really urgent and the public uh, welcome the consumption voucher. But then last year, um, many electronic platforms want to attract people to use their platform and therefore they would provide extra uh, benefits. If we make it mandatory for the public to use the same platform this time, then the electronic platform companies will not be able to uh, compete against each other. And so there is no need for these electronic platforms to provide benefits this year. I'm sure that if you allow uh, el um, the public to choose their own electronic platforms this time as well, then um, the enterprises will 
make the benefits more attractive. And these electronic platforms will try their best to compete against each other to provide the best deals for the public. Oh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Leung, so if you propose that um, that by changing the platform, then the first installment will not be dispersed in April. We are trying our best to provide the consumption voucher as soon as possible. Uh, some people are experiencing financial difficulties. Well, we are providing a public service. We do not mind extra work. We just want to provide the money in an expeditious manner. In the second round, however, we would allow the public to choose their platform. I can defer to Ms. Wong to answer your question. Yes, you are correct. Uh, to uh, to be more uh, effective and efficient, of course, we want the electronic platforms to compete against each other, but uh, we uh, we are not able to provide this option in the first installment because we want to disperse the first installment to 6.3 million people as soon as possible. And then for the second installment, we do want the electronic platforms to provide more benefits and therefore the, you will be allowed to choose your platform. Well, you have to understand that even for the first installment, many elderly would use paper forms, apply uh, paper application forms as well, and that would also take a long period of time. Thank you. Next, Ms. Yunus Yong. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the budget. I am in full support of the budget, and I thank you for distributing consumption vouchers in these difficult times. Uh, we were hoping to see a cash uh, handout, and we because uh, uh, that could help uh, the public pay utilities and. Some people asked uh, whether it could be used to pay insurance. I hope that the government can also consider these options as well. Uh, the FS has not included the consumption voucher to cover those below the age of 18. I hope that you could consider providing more subsidies for families. I understand that most people wish to receive the voucher as soon as possible, and I understand why the inclusion is not made, but I do hope that more support could be given to families to alleviate their financial pressure. I thank these FS for listening to our views. Uh, yesterday, uh, we heard that uh, some uh, middle class families are paying a uh, higher rent than the uh, than from the rent received from their own property so i want to ask whether the fs can also um give the rental enforcement uh, moratorium for smaller units Last year, we heard that as of June 21st, those who reach the age of 18 will receive the consumption voucher. This year, would you actually move the date to December 31st so that more people who reach the age of 18 this year will be able to receive this voucher? Thank you, Ms. Young. Regarding the progressive uh, rating uh, scheme, we have actually uh, considered uh, 
quite a lot about that. I'd like to defer this question to Ms. Chu. Yes, regarding the uh, rating wave, waiver, the uh, rate uh, payer could choose uh, which premises uh, to have this waiver. They have the right to choose. They could choose whichever uh, property they want to have that enjoy the rate waiver. Ms. Wong, how about uh, the 18-year-old, um, the line? Yes, uh, we have uh, 6.3 million people successfully registered. And in the second stage, we're, second stage we will have a, a date, specific date. That is a cutoff date for people who uh, have reached the age of 18. So that would be towards the, the middle of the year. Yes, for the second stage. That would include more people, right? Right, that's correct. Yes, for those who are newly eligible, they would be using the new date. That is the later date that we would uh, announce. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. That's the end of the question time. I would like to thank the FS and uh, his team for uh, attending the session. Our next meeting will be tomorrow, 3 p.m. in the afternoon and in uh, or, or 15 minutes after the uh, uh, House Committee uh, has uh, adjourned its meeting. Well, this is uh, the meeting, the end of the meeting. Thank you.